Hello there makers, it's Jo, it's episode 5 in our Back to Basics sewing course. Today in this episode we will be looking at doing some simple stitching on your sewing machine. In previous episodes we've taken a look at the kit you might need to get started with sewing, choosing fabric, cutting fabric and threading our machine. Once you've got your sewing machine up and running it's a good idea to test out some of the stitches and check that it's sewing really well before you start a project. You will need to have a good needle in your sewing machine so make sure you've got a new needle if you start with a blunt needle um, you will get sewing problems you'll get knots in your fabric you won't get um, the needle going through the fabric and into the foot plate as efficiently as you need to a needle you need to get started with most cottons and poly cottons is a needle with the number 80 on it first stitch we're going to try is a straight stitch. It's a secure stitch, so it's locked together with the top threads and the bottom threads. And I'm going to show you how to do that on your sewing machine. When you start any seam line or straight stitch, then you need to back tack at the beginning and the end of your seam, and that stops your seam coming undone. You also need to get into the muscle memory habit of putting your foot down before you start any row of stitching. Right, so let's look at sewing a simple straight line. So you're going to start with your needle down and you can use your hand wheel to turn so that your needle starts down. If your needle starts down and your foot should always be down, always have needle down, foot down and that's the way to start. Take a couple of stitches and then go back a couple of stitches. And those stitches are on top of each other. So this is four millimetres long. And if it's only very small, like one millimetre, you will get very small stitches. And go forwards and backwards at the end. To get your fabric out, you're going to lift up the foot, use the hand wheel to take up the needle, and then pull out some threads. Now don't be mean here, if you cut these threads off really short, you'll create yourself some new problems. So you can cut it off short towards the work, but you need to leave some nice long tails to put back through the slit and have them running out of the back. If you, have, if you have short pieces of thread here, when you start your next seam line, they'll shoot down into the foot plate. So you won't have enough thread to make your first stitch. So make sure you've got plenty here that's enough to make the first few stitches on your next seam. Here's the first row of stitches. At the start it's 2.5, in the middle we made longer stitches and you can see it's sort of puckering and gathering a little bit there in the middle and on the end we did some really really small stitches. So try out stitch length. A few things about sewing stitch length, so when you're sewing a line and you're choosing a stitch length, if you choose a stitch length 4, Your stitches will be really long and it will scoot along really quickly but your fabrics can gather because the stitch is quite loose. Also from the right side you'll see your stitches. So when you press that seam open it's a little bit gathered and puckered and you can see the stitches. For normal sewing, if you're making a project or for making a garment, then you would have your stitch length on 2.5. 2.5 makes a stitch that's much more locked, it doesn't gather up the fabric. And from the right side, you can only see really small stitches. And that's because I'm using a black thread. You see the difference between those two seam lines. 
This is with a big stitch. This is with the correct stitch length. Next, we're going to take a look at a zigzag stitch. You will need this to finish the edge of your seams to stop them fraying. And you also might use it if you're using a stretch fabric once you get going. So when you learn to sew, you'll have to do what's called finishing your seams, which is a stitch through the fabric that stops it fraying. So let's see if we can get a zigzag going really well on our machine. Don't change the tension, just change the stitch width. So my stitch now is going to go side to side. I'm going to practice getting my eye in. I'm going to run the edge of my foot along my previous seam line. And I've got a zigzag stitch. I'm going to use stitch length to make that stitch even wider. And I'm going to see what happens if I make it much smaller. What happens when I make my width narrower but my length longer here are the zigzag stitches so i don't have to remember what i had on the machine because i can tell by the stitch so this was my average zigzag this is what happened when i made the stitch length longer so there's a bigger space between the stitches that's the stitch length here i made the stitches uh, closer so i made the stitch length smaller here i made the stitch width smaller so it's a much smaller zigzag and here i made the stitch length really long so it hardly looks like a zigzag at all and that's a stitch that you would use for sewing knits together so have a play with your zigzag and see if you can understand which dial on your machine changes the length and which dial changes the width. You might have a cutter on the side of your machine. You can only normally see it if you turn your machine round. Mine's on the side, sometimes it's on the back, sometimes it's on the inside at the back. I also like to have really small machine scissors. I've only just started doing this and um, it's really good for just picking up and snipping things off without having unwieldy large scissors around my machine because if they're there then I get tempted to use them. You might have a dial on your machine which just gives you some choices of zigzag so you can't maybe change the width and the length you just decide you want a really big zigzag, a really small zigzag. So try all of those and see if you can get a good tension with the threads on both sides. You select from the stitch selector wheel which zigzag you would like. So this one's got a choice of three. So it's got a small narrow one, a wider one and a wider and longer one. So on this one, I can choose three different types of zigzag. These stitches here in this little group are how to make a three step buttonhole. These are my zigzag choices. And I can also choose number five on this one where they're all the same width, but some are closer together. So that stitch length is smaller. That stitch length is a bit longer and that stitch length is a bit longer still. So let's have a look at the zigzag on this machine. So this is stitch number four, which is the widest and longest one. This is zigzag choice number three, which is narrower and closer. And this is zigzag number two, which is very, very small and very narrow. So this is on a machine that, where you can't change the width by small increments. You get different choices of zigzag stitches. What happens if your seam isn't always straight? Here's how to sew a curved seam. On a curve, we might need to pin vertically so that our pins aren't in the way. If you, if you pin horizontally, it can sometimes sort of pucker the fabric. So if you're sewing a curve, pin vertically. You can also add the seam line on 
to guide you round the corner. Position the foot, draw down the needle and start to sew. And back tack. And do not sew over pins. So I'm going to take those out as I go along. I can keep lifting the foot. To get round a sharper corner. Or I can just use my hands to guide the fabric. And back tack. If you try and turn this corner now and this curve is turned out, all that spare fabric inside will be bunching up and you won't get that nice neat tip because there'll be a lot and in there it feels like there's lots of spare fabric. So to finish a corner seam you can take some of this fabric out. You can cut little V's out of it and then there's not so much trying to overlap on the inside. Now when I turn this I've got much less fabric fighting for room inside the seam allowance. That's how you sew a curve. To turn the corner on a fabric in a seam line we're going to do what's called a pivot. So going to put the foot down gently, start with our needle in the down position, forwards and back tack and when we get to the corner where we want to turn we're going to keep the needle in the down position, lift up the foot and then turn the piece of fabric Put the foot back down again and continue to sew. Lift the foot, lift the needle, release the fabric and then we've managed to turn the corner. You can take the corner off because that's just the seam allowance and none of the stitching. And then when you turn the work out, you can work the corners out so that you get sharp points and right angles. The tension on this machine is here, whereas on my other machine it's at the top. But again, I'm trying to keep it on the four mark. I might do slight adjustments just either side of four. But I won't be whizzing it round to other numbers and trying all sorts of things. Just as an example, if your machine's got knocked or something while you've been putting it away or you've never used it before, I've put the stitch tension on one. It's really extreme. And let's see what happens. So I will look at my stitching and think that's fine, that's doing all right. But when I look on the back, I haven't got that zigzag anymore. It's the tension is too loose on the back. Let's go extreme and see what happens. So this time, from the right side it's really tight and from the wrong side it looks good. So you can see when the number's really high it's tight on the top, when the number's really low it's loose on the bottom. So put your tension around four or on exactly on four, sew your line and take a look. My back is a little bit loose, so I'm going to go towards the higher number to make it a little bit tighter. And that's better. I'm still operating around tension number four.
So use your manual to find out if you're getting loose tension on the top, what to change, and if you're getting loose tension on the bottom, what to change. But don't swing from three to five. It's only one tiny little movement if you need to change the tension. So if you're getting a really bad stitch on the back like this, put your tension disc to four and then work one notch one way and one tiny notch another. Don't dial it from one extreme to the next. Lastly, we're going to look at some common errors that you might make when you're sewing with your sewing machine. It's quite hard for me to force an error on my machine, but I'm going to try and show you a few common mistakes that lots of people make. Mistake number one is to start off the edge of your fabric. If you start off your fabric, it chews up the end of your material. So if you start too close, it can chew down the end of your fabric. So make sure you start with just a few millimetres under the foot and then use your forwards and back stitch to make sure your sewing goes to the end. Another common mistake is that you cut your threads too short and so on the first push down of the needle there wasn't enough thread to make the first stitch so the thread shot out of the needle. So your first stitch needs to have plenty of thread otherwise it as soon as the needle goes up and then down when it goes down it doesn't have enough thread. Another mistake that's easy to make is to not keep your thread ends tidy so then they end up all getting knotted and sewn into other parts of your garment. So make sure you have your little machine scissors close at hand and you can keep all of your threads tidy. Don't cut them off small if you haven't back tacked. You need to back tack in order to cut the threads off really small. Other errors that I've tried to force on my machine today but I can't get them to do it is if you have these threads loose um, and not going out of the back of the machine they can start a little nest or a little knot at the start of your seam line so make sure every time you cut off your last threads you take your threads to the back so they're out of the way ready for the next one especially if they're if they're loose then they sometimes the ply of the thread will flip around and you'll get a little knot on your needle. If you get a little bend in your needle, then you need to change it because it will damage inside. Not starting with the foot down creates an almighty mess. And quite often, if it goes wrong, you need to stop. So you need to stop, take it all out, and I would actually suggest re-threading it because there's something that's twisted or plied or caught on something else all through your machine and it doesn't matter how much you try and sew through it it, it, it won't continue a nice sewing line so stop re-thread and start again sometimes if you sew really really quickly then you're and you have your foot on the pedal really fast then your threads can flip out of the tension discs that are in here and those tension discs are like two little mini symbols and they hold the thread coming through here and if, the, and if the thread flips out of them, then there's no tension on the thread and the thread is just coming through too fast and the machine can't keep up and the thread won't make proper stitches. So make sure that your thread is going through your tension disc. The bobbin can also come out of the little tension hook inside. So there's a few things to try if your machine isn't quite sewing correctly just yet. Thank you very much for watching. Do come back for the next episode where we will be looking at some hand sewing techniques to finish off your projects. In the meantime, do head over to Minerva to take a look at our current promotions and online offers. You can also join the Craft Club where you will get our offers throughout the whole year. Thank you very much for watching. See you again soon.